Today we're checking out Astro Colony, an endless sci-fi factory exploration sim which we covered at the Kickstarter announcement for last year. Well tomorrow, the 7th of November, Astro Colony will be fully released on Steam. So let's see what it's like. Now also I would like to thank Terrod Games for sponsoring this video. I feel incredibly lucky to have this opportunity having backed the game from when it was first released on Kickstarter. So let's jump in and see what it's about. Yeah, so here we are. The first thing that we want to do though is to just gather some resources. Now each of the, re the asteroids have one or possibly two types of minerals within them. We need the ice for oxygen and we need the iron for building. You can also find copper, I think this might have, yeah, this is the copper one. And you can also find carbon and gold as well. If we go into, if we press T now, we have this massive tech tree. This is much larger than originally it was. There's plenty to unlock, uh, including farming now by the looks of it. But to start off, we want to unlock oxygen. We need this in order to survive. If you're building or if you're um, even mining these asteroids, you'll receive some basic uh, science, as you could see there. Now we're going to jump ahead for a bit in a moment, but first let's start off with the oxygen generator. We're going to place that down, and now if we click on there, we can use the ice that we've already produced to refill our oxygen down there. And we can also place down a power generator. I'm gonna do it on this side. We'll probably make this more like a spaceship eventually. And you can see here that we can use our coal. Can I drag it from there? Apparently not. There we go. And that will produce 10 power for 30 seconds for each piece of coal that we have. But of course we have nothing connected to it. So the next thing that we're going to have to do is start unlocking things like asteroid catching to bring the asteroids to us rather than us to have to go to them. And then we want to try and focus on getting to automated catching as soon as possible. So we're a little bit further along. We've actually got the first bits of automation within our factory going. Here we have the asteroid grabbers. They're grabbing those asteroids for us and then processing them into their bare minerals. And then just here for the time being until we unlock more advanced uh, logistics, in particular the splitters, we're using two smelters here, one for copper and the other one for iron, and then all the rest of the ores are being sent to the storage, the opposite side, which are these units here. And they're just keeping everything nice and clean. We don't want too much spaghetti. We want to organize so that we know where everything is, but we want to get further along with this so that we can actually build some thrusters and turn this into a little bit of a spaceship to get us to the planetoids. There are some really big ones. If we go into this, you can see over here we have um, one with over 15,000 copper available, um, Lurayd. Um, that's actually a pretty good one for us to check out. We might go over to that one. In the early game, it is a little bit slower progressing. You, you fly through the technological tree pretty quickly uh, until you unlock the, the next level. And then it really comes down to harvesting more resources and automating the whole process, which we're trying to do, but we're still a ways off. You'll notice that we now have an oxygen bubble around our little station. And I've also added a harpoon connector. So we're actually gonna jump in this right now. We're gonna pull this down towards us. And this will allow us to connect. And from here, we can set up miners, should we wish. Um, we should probably do it just for funsies. <laughs> and we will start producing the dirt, which we're going to need later on anyway for uh, more research. The other thing that I really like about this, it's quite smart, is that because it's voxel based, you could, in theory, place your wiring beneath and then with that excess dirt that you digged up, or dug up, sorry, you can then cover that over. That is something I would love to have uh, in Satisfactory, but they've confirmed that won't be uh, the case. Anyway, we're going to leave that to do its stuff and hopefully we're going to unlock those automated um, asteroid catchers. So things have, I guess, progressed a little bit since you last saw this. We've just been setting up another um, auto harvester. We've got all of these. Uh, I, I may have overdone it. I, 
I really like the idea of running like power underneath. And then I thought, well, why don't we do the logistics underneath? And so I spent about an hour doing all of this. And the good thing is that this is expandable. All we need to do is keep running it back and we'll have a really long ship that will just be able to constantly farm these resources. And all we've done is like a merging line. And so it removes one item every, well, every couple of lines. I, I messed this up slightly. And these all run along to the middle-ish area and the same with the opposite side. And that's going to bring all of the resources into one lane where they will then go on to processing here. Um, and maybe even long-term uh, along these sides. But for now, <laughs> I need to power it, uh, which means we need to add more of these. And I need to work out a load balancer for these, really, so that they're constantly running. Because if you don't do a load balance, one smelter... Oh, they just remind me of smelters from Satisfactory. One carbon reactor will just hog all of the coal, which obviously is not good for business. But we do have the option to use splitters now and these we can set how many items we have in each one so we could have one and then put zero on the, the right and then we could have to every three so that's done a 25 to 75 split and all we need to do is run a line along here and so that should be balanced now. Oh, and also while I'm doing this, I thought I'd show you here. If we replace this, you can see it's now all a black floor. If we want to do the same floor as it was before, if we press K, and this is really important. If you want to get hold of the auto asteroid catcher, you need to press, press K to access it. And then you can actually drag this down to where you want it in order to uh, put it in that hotbar space. This may not look like much, but oh, I am so happy with it. I spent so long doing this, but look how beautiful the lines look. I just think it's so beautiful. Everything is just as I've intended it to be. We now have the working power plant that's perfectly split. Our iron ingot facility, as well as our copper ingot facility. And our gold ingot facility. I'm not sure what we need the gold for yet, really, other than this contraption, which uh, generates the oxygen field for us. We also have this section of the factory, which is producing water, which is then going on to be broken down into oxygen and hydrogen. Speaking of which, I need some hydrogen. So I'm going to have to add some coal to that. I hadn't thought that through. Okay, bear with me. She's a little bare bones, but it is working, providing I have the thrust in the right direction. Okay, you need to go forwards. You need to go forwards. And then this one, this set uh, can, oh, I can send us up. Okay, so we're now heading up. I'm trying to get to Laraid. And here we are. The ship is magnificent. Actually, oh no, no, don't, don't, stop, stop. <laughs> no, no. Oh, that was faster than I anticipated. Oh, perfect. So this is our first planetoid. And from here, if we just flatten this land out slightly, we should be able to build another dock and then would you look at that we're not even clipping uh, also i just want to say i love running everything underneath <sighs> a lot of hard work but it it's it's worth it so now that we've found a planet we can start harvesting these resources and i think if we press c oh we haven't unlocked the scanner yet let's do that okay if we press c now look at all these resources for us to mine. In order to mine these, we are going to have to get these on flat land. So the plan here is to chop at all of the uh, topsoil, and then we'll use that by right-clicking to just cover the layer in, 
a flat surface so that we can start mining from here. And then all of this will just be exported back to our mothership, as it were, to produce whatever we need from it. Advanced mining, minor drones, ooh, don't mind if I do. Now the problem with this one is that we require chemistry. And for that, uh, sorry, this one is chemistry. And for that, we actually need people to do the research for us. It requires scientists. And though we missed our ship, we do have five astronauts. Um, they look very happy to be here. So we're going to need to start working out where we can house them. I think it'd be really nice to have like an upper level. We'll have production on the lower floor and then um, like, a place for them to live above. Ooh, you know what? We could house them here. Uh, there's a, an area for them to get food. Although we need to start producing food and I have no idea how to do that. There is something so cool about seeing the automated uh, asteroid catchers working. I love it. And I've also started working on the outer walls. Um, I'm trying to make it more like a spaceship. And so we have, you can see how this will be built eventually. I am trying to cover all of this in to make it look quite cool for our guests. What's this sci-fi wall? Oh, I don't know. Don't like having gaps. <laughs> oh, and the other thing is we have some solar panels now. I'm I'm probably going to want to cover the whole thing eventually, um, but we need to work out how to keep this open and uh, then cover the rest. The ship is getting pretty big now and we've just about um, filled in, I mean, the walls around the outside. Um, trying to play about with a bit of the detail at the moment. And uh, it's getting there, it's getting there slowly. The only thing, uh, if we drop down here, I actually, decided I'd build some robots over here. And <laughs> you can see we've built loads, but I'm not sure how they work. Um, so if you do know, please let me know in the, uh, actually we should probably turn this off, uh, but do let me know in the comments if you know what I'm doing wrong here. I think the thing for us to do at the moment is just to close this all up and then perhaps in the next episode we'll look at what we can do with robots if you guys are interested let me know in the comments below and look into harvesting this a little more so give me a few moments while I uh, work on this and we'll see what you think and here we are the ship is complete I think we should call it something like uh, the gladius uh, but if you think of a better name, let, do let me know in the comments. We're going to give this a little uh, bit of a, a fly now. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> there's not much I could do about this spot. Um, perhaps we need more space, but I'm pretty happy with how this looks overall. Uh, we've added a little bit of detail uh, and I mean, it's actually a working factory, which is fantastic could do a game some more people but maybe that's for another day so the next thing that we need to do is undock and ooh, oh yep fast we're fast <laughs> let's slow let's turn these off uh, okay so we need to just reduce these fully and wow which is actually pretty beautiful I've got to admit that this gives me uh, vibes of both Satisfactory and Space Engineers like combined. I'm really enjoying it and this is definitely getting that itch. And there's something really cool about having a working factory within your ship and being able to travel wherever you want. And I know there's a lot of exploration in this game but there's just so much for us to cover in such a short video. If you do want to see more, do let me know. And guys, I have to say a special thank you to Terrid Games for sponsoring this video. If you do like the look of it, do check it out. Tomorrow it's going to be released on Steam. I'll put a link in the description below. 
But until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solo Clips patrons, James Owen and Fireflesh, as well as our Lunars, The Calamity, Ben and Star, and our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Dashlom. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.